Well, g'day everyone. Welcome along to today's webinar. I'm John James and I'm passionate about enabling change and innovation. And that's why I'm hosting today's webinar, where we can explore and discuss issues relating to enabling change and innovation. Today's um, webinar is a special one in that it's uh, where we celebrate our 10th anniversary. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the hundreds of participants from over a dozen countries who have joined in along the journey. But I'd like to especially acknowledge the many brave presenters who you can see on the slide there on the right-hand column uh, who have joined us in this journey. For uh, most of them, it was their first experience at presenting at a webinar. So it's been great to um, have gotten this far with the series. Our first presenter is Ian Kinnamont over in Western Australia, who is a land use and natural resources planner. He believes that land use and landscape change requires people with the right knowledge and resources to bring about change. Ian uses technology as a tool to manage and communicate relevant knowledge to people who bring about change. And LinkedIn is an increasingly important tool used by Ian for knowledge transfer. And in this presentation, he'll show you how he has used it to his advantage. We can see your presentation there now. Thanks, Ian. So over to you. Oh, thanks, John. Um, yeah, so the topic of my presentation is connecting and communicating for change using uh, LinkedIn. Um, basically, I use LinkedIn in a number of ways. Uh, firstly, for driving traffic to um, knowledge hubs that I've created for, um, for clients, um, particularly in, in terms of knowledge management and uh, uh, knowledge communication. Um, related to that, information sharing, and also associated with, with that in terms of developing the knowledge hubs, um, information gathering. The fourth area that um, interested in getting into and see big big application for based on my current experience with LinkedIn is in terms of online uh, engagement and facilitation of communities of interest or practice or, or work groups. Case study I'm providing is in relation to the Perth uh, region um, and the natural resource management um, uh, group uh, for the Perth region. They have a project called the Sustainable Agriculture Project and I provide some services to that uh, project in terms of developing a knowledge hub and ongoing communication of content. We, we actually, um, uh, the, the knowledge hub has about 3,000 knowledge resources, I guess you call them, and each month we add about 30-odd uh, new resources to that knowledge hub. So it's about building the knowledge hub and then communicating that, that knowledge once or information once, once it's added. There's a large um, audience for that, that knowledge. Um, uh, we pr principally focus on that sort of rural land use, rural land management um, area. There's, we, we, we can't engage with, with everyone or the, the project can't engage with everyone. So a key strategy is to um, engage with the influencers that, are, that is the, um, uh, the, the people that engage with the, the land managers. So that includes people working for the government agencies, industry and community groups. And um, I'm just going to have to move this here because I can't see what I said. Oh. So funders and, and consultants, and I've got a URL for that um, knowledge hub. So I'm just going to run through the process of what we do. Um, effectively, um, or what, what I do, um, is add, the first step is to add content to the website. And uh, so here's just a, a, an extract from the website. Um, here, here I've just added this um, recent report on sustainable natural resources in, in agriculture in WA. Um, so we add the, the content to the, the website. You could use a blog or, or some other um, knowledge rep repository. Um, copy, we then copy and paste the URL into uh, share and update on LinkedIn, which I'll just show you that. So basically I've taken the URL which, which uh, appeared in the, the top header and I've pasted it into my profile under um, activity. Uh, generally what I then do is put in some keywords in front of the URL uh, such as 
um, the, 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 you know, um, gather attention. Um, and then I then use the share this facility on uh, LinkedIn to share with the relevant groups that I'm mem a member of, as well as um, contacts that I think uh, would be interested in that, that material, and also um, if, if pertinent to a, um, a social media uh, account, you know, Twitter or Facebook, something like that, if, if, I, if, if I can. Okay. <coughs> So what the results of that, as you can see here, there's some uh, Google Analytics. Um, generally, we find with the Knowledge Hub, just through organic um, searches and referrals from other sites, we get between three and four hundred um, visitors per month. Um, that can be significantly enhanced when we uh, use. Um, other t tools, communication tools such as LinkedIn or um, e-newsletters, that sort of thing. And with the example that I just showed previously, that report on sustainable natural resource use, um, here I've just shown in the analytics when I posted it on my LinkedIn profile and, and referred it to a couple of groups. And you can see that the um, visitation rate went from about 15 down here to about 50 up here. So generally with that sort of um, active communication of information through LinkedIn, we can, or I can significantly increase the visitation rate um, up to about 20% or, or more of uh, total uh, monthly, monthly accesses. Um, using the analytics, you can also see what percentage of returning visitors and where they those visitors come from. Um, in this case here, probably about half those people came from, from Perth. Um, and I get better results when I post something on, on a LinkedIn group that I'm a member of rather than just posting it on my profile. In fact, it, it's quite significantly um, increases. So um, just some tips here uh, in terms of engaging with and, and communicating with um, your sort of community of interest. Uh, firstly, have a, have a clear goals and a plan. And in the case of the work that I've done with Perth NRM, we have a schedule, so a monthly schedule of and the themes that we're sort of addressing uh, at each time. Identify your, your target market and influences and, and form a relationship, I guess, with them or a contact with them uh, through LinkedIn. Um, identify the information needs, which sort of relates more to the, the plan. Uh, I've just touched on fostering links to the target market and have a knowledge sort of repository, information repository. A lot of people have blogs uh, like WordPress. They're very easy to, to set up. You don't have to have a dedicated website or knowledge hub as, as we do. Um, the other thing, good thing about WordPress as well is it shows you the stats as well. Other tips, join relevant groups, um, monitor and measure traffic as you can, as you saw with that, that analytics, uh, post regularly, keep, keep the um, information alive, uh, use images and keywords, we, we find, or I find, sorry, that um, yeah, a picture speaks a thousand words and you probably get a tenfold um, uh, number of people uh, connecting to the information you've posted rather than if you just have if, um, you post the URL, for example. Uh, focus, on, focus on quality and not quality, and right to that is don't be a, be a spammer. When, when sort of working with groups and posting information, um, the, you find some people just keep posting stuff you know, quite, quite regularly. Um, in the case of the, the post that I just showed you, we've, we've probably well, I've posted um, couple of things um, in, the, in the last month and that's that's really all because I'm not, not really sure the other stuff that we've put on the Knowledge Hub is sort of relevant to those groups. And um, yeah, lastly, be, be courteous. Um, key advantages that I've gained from uh, using LinkedIn, um, the ability to connect information to contacts. Um, 
I guess over a 30-year working life, I've developed a, a whole range of contacts uh, within that sort of land use and natural resource sort of uh, space, town planning space, and um, I've, I've uploaded my um, the contact list that I that I had through my email accounts, and that gave me an initial sort of contact list of probably about um, 400, I think, 300 or 400, and. Uh, yeah, I find that I've been able to make contact with people that uh, I haven't sort of talked to um, since early on in my my career, but um, and they've sort of moved location, but they've also joined LinkedIn, so you can you know maintain that sort of contact with people no matter where they are. Uh, expanded wet network, so my current network is up to close to 800 uh, people. Uh, again, uh, some of them are in WA and some are interstate and some are international. Uh, again, I try to keep it within that sort of land use, urban and, and rural sort of planning space. Um, it, it helps uh, with your, your individual brand presence or business presence and recognition. Uh, it's a source of information and knowledge and new skills and services. So um, the this, uh, service of online group facilitation is, is one sort of exp being explored at the moment. Um, and and finally, uh, happy customers and, and business opportunities. Uh, one thing I haven't really improved is my graphic skills. That's showing me with a, a sparkly smile. I'm supposed to be a lot happier through the use of LinkedIn, but um, there's, there's one uh, for the list. Uh, thanks, John. I think that's about it. So our next presenter is Jared Byrne from Townsville. Uh, Jared has studied at a number of places, including James Cook Uni, uh, University of Queensland, Griffith Uni, and the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. He is the co-author of the CPA Australia publication, Grants in Australia, Management and Accountability. And Jared has received a Prime Minister's Award for Outstanding Leadership and a Premier's Public Sector Award for his work with Cyclone Larry. Jared is extensively involved in governance and capacity building in the not-for-sector, not-for-profit sector. Sorry, he is currently the executive manager for Emergency Management Queensland and is based in Townsville. We can see your presentation there now. Thanks, Jared. So over to you. Yeah, uh, thanks, John. Welcome, everybody. As uh, John indicated, I work for Emergency Management Queensland, and um, for those of us in Australia, particularly at uh, at this point in time this week, um, New South Wales is facing some major challenges. So I might um, allude to that a bit during the presentation, John. Uh, just uh, going through, my focus today is, is actually in the emergency management uh, context. Um, I actually use LinkedIn for a range of things, but um, the practices I use are, are pretty similar. And I'd like to also pick up on some of the things that, that Ian indicated. We mentioned at the end uh, there from Ian's presentation regarding the time it takes, and I suppose I've had over the years to to try and refine what I do and, uh, and try and keep that that, that time spent um, under control. So, um, with that in mind, I suppose the thing I keep front of mind when I'm doing um, LinkedIn is um, success is uh, the result of uh, small efforts repeated day in and day out. And uh, I'll repeat this theme a couple of times today, John, because it's a I think it's a great lesson in terms of being effective with LinkedIn just to keep a steady stream of activity, whatever it might be happening, and that way you build up your networks and you build up your relationships most importantly. What I want to do is talk a little bit about emergency management for those of you who are not familiar with it. Um, I, prior to joining Emergency Management Queensland, I actually worked for the uh, Queensland Department of Primary Industries, um, and I was involved there with uh, a lot of work working with communities and working on projects. I want to talk briefly about developing and managing networks. Uh, I want to talk about collaborating with peers, which, which obviously uh, Ian uh, mentioned, and I want to talk a little bit about response and recovery um, when there's urgency involved, which is part of the emergency management framework. When we talk about emergency management, there are five phases, and I've built my LinkedIn strategy around those phases and what I need to know, who I need to know, and the timeliness of that. In Queensland, we launched this year a program called Get Ready Queensland. I've just provided that with our uh, web address. 
Um, but each of these phases are different in how I, I manage and, and use LinkedIn. And I'll just elaborate a little bit on that. Early in the process, um, when I've got time, that is when we're looking at um, planning and prevention, uh, my interest there is trying to develop and manage relationships that will help me at some future date. And so the fundamental thing is that uh, I learned early in the piece that you really need to be disciplined in what you do with your your LinkedIn strategy. You need to have a plan about what you want to achieve. So what I did is I, from an emergency management point of view, I went through who I need to develop relationships with, either existing ones or ones that uh, I need to seek out. And Ian mentioned how um, what I like about LinkedIn is I've worked with many people over the years and it's actually catching up with people who you may have worked in with the past but you've lost contact with, so it's been handy there. So I just did a simple exercise there about um, going through government agencies, which you can go to directories. Um, key stakeholders, I tend to look at um, who are the organisations that might um, be of significance to me. Um, Regional Development Australia, is a, uh, those organisations are particularly worthwhile for rural and remote areas because of their networks. Industry, I've developed contacts on, and connections through LinkedIn, through Chambers of Commerce and similar bodies. When we look at community, one of the uh, issues we've got with disaster management, obviously, is being able to contact people quickly. Um, and while we've got other systems in place for the disaster management framework, I complement that with what I can do through LinkedIn. The next one is particularly important, and, and LinkedIn sort of has picked up on this at a, at a global level. They talk about you know, who are the influencers. So what I look for in my community of interest are who are the people who are um, most influential so we can get messages out. Um, and the next couple of media, um, and obviously an important one, so I liaise and build relationships with local media and print and electronic researchers, um, and uh, bodies such as APEN and others are, are, are important in that, and universities. And last but not least is, is you know, the peers, the colleagues, the friends that you've worked with over the years, and then how they might identify other people that might be uh, significant to you. The, um, in terms of developing and managing those networks, so I have a system built around uh, looking at um, some tools. So um, I, I look at uh, moving my email selectively um, and incorporating some of that material into my status bar, into my groups, or into my projects. I also work and integrate a number of tools with, uh, with LinkedIn, Microsoft Outlook, obviously, for emails. Um, for source materials, I use SlideShare so I can share information of value, and I use another call, a note-taking tool called Evernote. So I look at meetings, information from meetings. The, the argument there is that I'm building relationships and I'm value-adding, um, and I'm avoiding uh, spamming. Obviously, web page um, information, local newspapers, conference proceedings, and so it goes on. What I find interesting is that I also monitor the, the amount of traffic and, and, and the, the number of connections I've got and who views my uh, profile. On the, on the right-hand side on the slide, you'll see just a, a little on the screen. Um, it's just a screen grab where it shows just in a particular period in the last seven days how many people have viewed my profile. The tips for developing your connections and your, and your relationships is reward connections and just courteously acknowledge them. Um, secondly, people are, unfortunately, there's a lot happening with endorsements now, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and last but not least, I'll use some rather traditional methods of building relationships. I will actually send um, cards or, or thank you notes to people through style mail, do I say, uh, rather than get lost in email. So it's all about building relationships. It's all about respecting that relationship and, uh, and being ethical about what you do. So as I said, I find the card system, it's sort of, make certain um, when you take the time to do that, that you know there's, there's value and quality in that relationship. It's not about just simply seeing who's got the most number of connections, but it's the, it's the quality of those connections and the quality of those relationships. So just uh, summing up that little bit, again, as I said, success is the sum of the efforts and repeated day in, day out, and that's the model I adopt. In terms of the page, um, my, um, my home page and my profile, um, I just highlight a few tips and a few ideas there. Um, how effective is your photograph? Um, I vary that photograph from time to time. The photograph I used there I've put in recently, um, it probably could be uh, a little better, the shadow and a few other things, but I think the fundamental is about having a good photograph, uh, and as I said, the, 
that one lacks a bit of definition of clarity. There's a, a gentleman in Townsville who has a photograph in his profile with him over a um, orb of the earth, which is quite uh, quite worthwhile. So just be very conscious. I still have a lot of people and colleagues on LinkedIn who have photos that probably are more appropriate to Facebook than LinkedIn. LinkedIn is about being professional and projecting that professional image. So again, I'd suggest um, check my page and... Uh, in another couple of uh, days, and you'll find a, a new, better photograph up. But I'll just give that as an example. And, I'm not perfect. Jared, we can't, we can't actually see your photo at the moment, so I think you might just need to move forward. And oh, slide. sorry, Matt, I just haven't moved down, sorry. Yeah, sorry, yeah, there yep, we go. thank you. Yeah, nope, the other one go. is the... Nope, nice tie. Yep, yeah, sorry, yep. Yeah. The other one is just how much detail you have in your name and your title. So I've padded mine out when I talk about attributes. Um, it then becomes too busy, as you can see from mine. So again, I think you need to think about um, what message are you saying? Um, do you in include qualifications after your name? My preference is no, but I've included it there. It just becomes too busy. Likewise, with the um, with your at what I call attributes, um, what are your key skills? Again, I suggest you keep that simple. Collaborating with peers. Uh, the biggest thing for, for me in the lead up to any event, any natural disaster or an event, is the relationships, as I've said, um, that you develop over time. And, and two ways, two other ways that I look at doing that is endorsements and recommendations. Um, if you look at the um, listing of endorsements that I've received, endorsements, unfortunately, I think, in my experience, um, tend to be I've got a bit of a spam quality about them that people tend to, you know, it's a quick and easy way. Obviously, LinkedIn set it up that way. I try to be a little bit more selective in who I endorse and, and who endorses me and why. Um, so the thing that I try and focus on is, um, for me, is to be uh, the attributes that I need and the endorsements around team building, change management, leadership development, that type of thing. So, again, um, with uh, recommendations, um, using them discreetly and also following up on people who do um, offer you recommendations. The next thing that uh, I'll just talk about is um, projects. On your LinkedIn page, um, not a lot of people use projects. Um, what I find handy with projects and, and where I get feedback from projects is that I actually get um, attract interest from people and, and exchanges um, by having projects listed up there and people will then contact me and ask for more information. LinkedIn doesn't allow you to use attachments in that area readily, so again, it's just a, a bit of a cue for some of the things that I'm, I'm working in. I'm, I'm just experimenting with that at present. But with projects, you use projects to find potential partners, attract interest, uh, focus your time, and build resources when you need them urgently. The relationships I build through projects allows me, particularly when we talk about disaster management, when we're looking at um, um, mobile devices and speed of response is to have some of these um, activities in place that you can then call on when you need them. I'll just skip the next slide, i just move on. The other thing that I do with LinkedIn I've found worthwhile is in terms of developing um, my skills with LinkedIn is I've, I've gone and looked and seen who's the, the most um, uh, effective people in using LinkedIn, who are the authors. So um, i just give one example here of a gentleman that um, I get, uh, I've got on his email a list um, from uh, uh, Wayne uh, Brettbath from America. So again, I've got several of these that I, I subscribe to to get tips and, uh, and ideas about LinkedIn and how to use it better. So just in summary, John, um, from an emergency management point of view, what LinkedIn's allowed me to do is build up a pool of people. Um, we're very much geographically based, so I can search by geography, I can search by interest area, and uh, and in our planning and preparation phase, that's quite worthwhile. When we're looking at actually responding in an event, um, we tend to rely on more traditional communication methods. But when we're looking at the recovery phase, if you remember that after an event, well, then again, you go back to LinkedIn for a lot of the connections with people who then have insights and ideas and, and whatever that you can work with. So my LinkedIn approach is to, to, to build it around my, my normal um, working arrangements and, and partnering that with things like Microsoft Outlook and some of those other tools. But I, I find LinkedIn um, a very handy resource and a very handy tool to keep a, a database of key contacts with a lot of information, a lot of search capability to then 
um, call on that when I need it at, uh, at the various stages in, um, in disaster management. Um, if people would like to know more, you can contact me um, uh, on that uh, email address or, in fact, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you, John. And we'll now move to our next presenter. So we're just running a little bit behind time now. So our third and final presenter for today is Lisa Morell from Sydney. She is a senior recruitment consultant in the agribusiness space, working at Launch Recruitment. Uh, although born and raised in the city, Lisa spent many hours exploring the delights of her grandparents' dairy farm as she was growing up. And Lisa's worked in the recruitment industry for 20 years in areas such as property and finance. However, she's always had uh, an enthusiasm and uh, resonance with rural and regional lifestyles. So today, Lisa is going to focus on how you can build your personal presence on LinkedIn with a focus on generating future business and career opportunities. Over to you, Lisa. Thanks so much, John. Um, yeah, so today, basically, my um, presentation is around building your own um, personal LinkedIn profile. Um, I probably will cover and, and possibly disagree a little bit with um, some of the other presenters, so I guess it's about opinion, um, and, uh, and we'll go from there. But I'm going to work through with you um, on my profile, and I think you can see my screen here. So I'm just going to work through and show you um, a couple of things that you can do to ensure that you're coming up um, at the top of somebody's search. Um, we're not just looking in this case at um, being approached by headhunters or recruiters, but being approached to um, perhaps share knowledge um, and uh, be, be sought out as a subject matter expert perhaps in your field. Um, I know a lot of people have been invited to do things through LinkedIn and do them simply as a profile building exercise. But I also know a lot of other people who've uh, been paid for sharing their ideas and um, after being found on LinkedIn. So what we need to remember, I guess, is that your profile establishes a resource on the internet of your experience and your capabilities in terms of your professional uh, skills. So it's an easy way for people to connect with you and to contact you. Ian mentioned uh, earlier, of course, it um, helps you reconnect with old work colleagues, old contacts, old clients, etc., and also to keep in touch with people once they've changed jobs, moved overseas, etc. One of the biggest benefits, though, is I think it really allows you to establish these new business connections. So, Jared mentioned um, having a professional photo. You can see from my photo here, I've got a professional head and shoulders shot, and we all do at launch, and that. Um, relevant for, I guess, people that want to work in a corporate environment or, or take up an executive position, etc. Um, but if you're applying for a role or, or working as an agronomist or something like that, you might want to do something a little bit more down to earth and, and have a picture of you, perhaps with a row of crops behind you or whatever you think is relevant in terms of building your personal brand. Definitely don't recommend um, logos, um, products images, things like that, because it's not about you personally. This page is your personal page. Um, professional headline. Uh, Jared mentioned, um, and I'm just pointing my cursor here underneath my name, uh, Jared mentioned in terms of his um, name, he was able to add um, qualifications, etc. I'm just going to click here on the edit profile so that you guys know how to edit this, by the way. Um, so to the left here you can see the little pen and you can go in and put uh, your qualifications. Your professional headline defaults to the most recent position title that you've held in terms of the um, CV part, if you like, of your profile, which uh, comes a bit later in the profile. And so Senior Recruitment Consultant Agribusiness Primary Industry at Launch Recruitment is my title in my um, CV proportion. But if you felt that your title wasn't particularly relevant, and some people um, have got titles that don't mean a lot or titles potentially that could be misconstrued, you could put a personal positioning um, phrase in here. So for me, it could be something like connecting um, talent in agribusiness with uh, companies or something along those lines. Uh, so just going to move down uh, here, there's a button here called activity 
uh, sorry, I don't want to go there. I want to go to where it says edit contact information. I'm just going to click on that and that will open things up a little bit more for me. And you can see here I've put all of my contact details in uh, that are relevant. So email, direct phone number, email address again, and uh, my actual physical street address. But I have Twitter and when I put a status update into my LinkedIn profile, I like it to go out to my Twitter account uh, at the same time as it heads out to my LinkedIn account. So I've added my Twitter uh, just there so that you can um, get the updates coming out together. So I'm just going to close that section again. Um, the next part that I'm going to talk about is keywords and skills. So you'll see here uh, under summary, and again we can edit it here over on the right, you'll see here under summary that um, we at launch uh, have got quite a lot of similar information in terms of, uh, say in paragraph three, the fact that we specialise in agribusiness, uh, also have other practice areas in telco and utilities. But again, you want to put some personal information in here to ensure that you do come up at the top of the search. So I've got the word agribusiness in my summary on a number of occasions, primary industry as well, recruitment, uh, those sorts of things. So if somebody wanted to do a search for somebody in recruitment in agribusiness, I want to come up towards the top of the list. So putting those keywords into your summary is really important. I'm going to scroll down a little bit further past the CV proportion because I think uh, we probably all know how to do that and uh, talk a little bit about skills and experience. Again, I've got um, my profile open so I can edit it. And if I wanted to uh, add a word, so let's uh, say extension within um, agribusiness, it comes up here as agricultural extension. I can click on that and hopefully I didn't add it. No, I didn't. Um, but I can add it there and save here. So um, for you, you might want to have the word extension listed on a number of occasions throughout your profile. Um, and whatever is relevant to you. But I also recommend you add it to your skills and experience because if you have a high number of endorsements for agricultural extension, again, it's going to bring you up close to the top of the searches as you uh, come through. So uh, that's the editing of the profile. So I'm just going to go back up to the top and close that. Save an exit. <clears throat> Jared talked uh, before about your status updates getting lost in a sea of um, updates, and I agree, uh, Jared, that that is true. However, from my perspective, uh, what I want to do in terms of my interaction with my uh, connections is really be at top of mind. So I'll make sure that I go through and do a status update a couple of times a week, it might be a little bit more often, um, but generally only two or three times a week. And it might be an article that I've seen that I think might be relevant about something that's going on with a particular um, food production business or something that's going on um, just in terms of actually subscribe to the ABC Rural News and uh, interesting articles will come up and I'll share them. And the reason that I do that is I want to see my face um, two or three times a week come up in the news feed. People might not necessarily read what it is that I've put up, um, but they're seeing my face coming up um, two or three times a week and uh, it's really just keeping uh, my face top of mind. Um, I've had a lot of people, funnily enough, that have recognised me um, at events and in the street simply because I'm quite active on LinkedIn. Um, so. I tend to um, use the status updates quite regularly for that reason. The thing I would say, um, and um, Jared I think mentioned briefly as well, it isn't Facebook. Um, don't use the spot to say status relating to your you know, favourite rugby team, um, or issues you're having with your boss obviously, or you know the fact you've had a bacon sandwich for breakfast. Nobody is really that interested in terms of uh, who's looking at your LinkedIn. Um, the other thing, again, Jared briefly mentioned this, but I have got a bit more to say um, in terms of the area here on who viewed your profile. I like to look at that at least um, daily, well, Monday to Friday, and um, have a little look at who's had a look at my profile recently. 
reason being, this person, um, Senior Consultant, RM Consulting Group, Environmental Services, interesting, uh, somebody who's Executive Office of Subtropical Dairy Program, um, they've both had a look at me and they haven't invited me to connect. So if I felt that they were relevant, so I'd always go in and have another look at their profile. Um, if I felt that they were relevant uh, to add to my network, I'd always uh, send them a personalised invite which says something along the lines of, hey, I noticed you looked at me. Um, is there anything I can help you with? Um, notice we share similar industry. Love to connect with you. And very often you'll find if you personalise your invite that they will respond. Um, they might have been looking at your profile to see whether or not they could find something on there um, that for whatever reason you just don't happen to have in full on your profile and they couldn't find it. So you could turn that into a business opportunity or you might be able to build rapport with them through recommending a relevant person that could also uh, assist them. But in any event, the bigger the your network, the wider your reach, the bigger your network, the more likely you are to come up in people's search results. Um, so that's what I would say about that. Probably the last tip, because I'm just looking at the timing here, that I will share is um, about free messaging in groups. Uh, somebody asked a question earlier about whether or not it's a good idea to have a paid profile and certainly for me in recruitment it is. It gives me a wider access to people. Uh, but I think for users that are pretty active and have got quite a lot of groups under their umbrella, um, you'll find a way to access uh, people that you're not connected to as a first degree connection for free through using a messaging service that's available within a group. So I'm just going to go back up to the top and we'll have a look in groups. I'm going to go and find John actually because he invited me to a group yesterday called Enabling Change and Innovation. In fact, John and I are first degree connections so I might look for somebody else within that group. Uh, I'm going to click here at the top right hand side next to where it says that I'm a member on that I button, I for information. And then just have a look here on the left hand side at who the members are. So clicking there on number 18, it's a very new group uh, with only 18 members. So you can see I'm connected as a first degree connection to quite a number of people within the group. Uh, so I might try and message perhaps a second degree connection. Neil Price. Uh, you can see underneath Neil Price uh, we've got follow Neil, see his activity, that will show you his activity within the group but also here send a message. Uh, and so I just pop in a subject, send him a message and click send. Um, generally a group will only give you a small number and I think it's about two or three uh, free emails per month but it gives you something for free. Uh, on your LinkedIn account that a lot of people aren't aware of. So I thought that was an excellent additional uh, tip for you. And John, again, just looking at the time, I think I probably should finish up there, so I'll throw back to you.